Kopf, was ist so alles? Kein Gift, ja. Gott. Hello. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes? Yes. Well, welcome to this, the annual press event for EOS. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be here for the second year and to introduce a fantastic panel of guests. Um, before we start on proceedings, um, we have members of the press here. You should already have your press materials, but uh, if you haven't, uh, we have Claudia and uh, Martin here, who you can see for your, uh, your press materials. And we hope to have time for questions, but we ask maybe, can we have those at the end, so that we give this panel a chance to, uh, to talk. So uh, yeah, firstly, my name's Nick Pierce. I'm the moderator for the event today. Um, I run Alexander Daniels Global, and I came into additive manufacturing because of its application in medical, fascinated by how it was genuinely changing people's lives. And here we have a, a real-life example of that, which I'm thrilled to share the stage with in, in Denise. Um, but if I introduce the panel, on my left, I have the new CEO of EOS, Marie Langer. Uh, then we have Dr. Marco Nock, Director of Innovation Management for EOS. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Paralympic cyclist, uh, gold medalist, there's too many to mention, Denise Schindler. And then finally we have Brian Neff, uh, CEO of Syntavia, who earlier this year set up a purpose-built, state-of-the-art facility for additive manufacturing. So. Today, we invite you at the booth to experience your production plus in terms of production innovation, production reliability, and production flexibility. But now, I want to talk to the panel. And um, Marie, the last six weeks, it must have been a real whirlwind for you since uh, becoming the CEO. A big step for you, a big step for the company, but, but also the industry as well as the first female CEO, I believe, in 3D printing. Tell us what it's been like. Yeah, so uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm really fascinated by the technology due to his groundbreaking and sustainable nature. And it makes me really proud and excited to be able to shape the future of the US together with a talented and dedicated team here. Um, yeah, so of course, the first weeks, they were uh, a little bit overwhelming, like exciting. Um, so challenges always, how do you say, give me like the sense of action. So it provide me with uh, energy and, and I, I have fun in doing that job and I think that's the most important part. So um, yeah, what else to say? So in me being the, the first female uh, CEO, for me that's not that special to be honest because my brother and me, we, we grew up with this technology. So it doesn't feel uh, very new. So my dad founded the company when I was three years old. My brother was seven years old, who is a great partner and support for me. I'm also with this role now. And um, yeah, so, so we were experiencing um, this company growth over the last 30 years. Yeah. So, but I think we're also well known for our pioneering spirit. And um, so I think for that, it fits quite well to have a female CEO. Fantastic, thank you. So, the transition, you're now the second generation of the founding family. Uh, what does this mean for you? But, but also, what does this mean for your father, uh, Dr. Hans Langer? W will he retire? So first of all, like as a CEO, I will focus on profitability, globalization, and sustainability. And um, I think over the last years, we experienced a lot of growth, dynamic in the market. And uh, to be able to react um, to that, I think it's very important to sustain our pioneering spirit and entrepreneurial culture that my dad always brought in and combine that with this great technology expertise we have as a market leader. And um, my dad did not resign yet. He's still chairman of the EOS group, responsible for the alignment of strategy of our EOS group of companies and uh, together with a very skilled and passionate global leadership team uh, we're driving this transition and um, yeah we will bring our technology to the next level i'm sure of that so 
not quite on the golf course yet for uh, for your no, part. No, actually, of he doesn't play golf. <laughs> no. He loves to fly. <laughs> okay. So I think maybe he's digging into that. Yeah, he's he's shining for tomorrow. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think he's really excited. Also, that now we we made the step for this uh, transition in the family, yeah. and that yeah, to show also this full commitment for the next thirty years yeah. from the family side. Fantastic. So over the coming years, what are your priorities in EOS and what's your vision for the future? So um, yeah, for me, the most important is to make EOS successful. And I think for that, um, we have to put our customers in the center of our attention, focusing on technology advancements, so re reliable processes, um, quality, transferable processes, all of that. And then, of course, having great service to the customer and also focusing on this end-to-end -end solutions. And um, we have a great partnership with Atrex, like it's a scan-to-product approach. Uh, I also have the product here. Um, Peter Malkin is there as well, um, showing our application. And um, yeah, I think this is the future and um, we want to like help our customers and provide them with the whole uh, digital solution chain. Yeah. So, but looking more long-term, that's now more the short-term topics, looking more long-term, for me it's very important that our technology, and I'm sure we have that in our DNA, is, um, yeah, is solving some of the big problems in this world, like providing like social and ecological impact, and um, yeah, we will dig into more da uh, like dig more into that <laughs> within the next years. I think there are a lot of great examples we do already, uh, developing some materials that are biodegradable, and um, yeah, reducing the footprint and carbon footprint of our customers, yeah. and also of course uh, improving people's lives. And so I'm very excited also to have you here. Well, I think that's a, a great segue into uh, into Denise. Uh, we, we, we pass the ball to you. So um, I if I may say, y you are a real life example of customized application <laughs> additive manufacturing. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your story and how additive manufacturing is really helping you with elite performance sports and the success that you're having? you I think yeah. can we line up the microphone oh you take mine oh yeah I can scream oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was just saying like um, 3d printing and all the new technologies are a game changer in the life of an amputated person. So you have to, if I look back, like I got amputated after uh, a tram accident when I was two years old, so I grew up with it. And when I was young, so the thoughts were only like, I am happy that I have a prosthetic which allows me to walk through my life and um, to be okay with my daily challenges. And this totally changed over the last 10 years because we have now opened up the door to like making very, very special prosthesis like sports prosthesis are. So there's one side, okay, we have like this daily prosthesis so that enables me to walk, to live my life, to walk around here at the ferry, that's okay. But you have to see, you wouldn't like go in the gym with your business shoes and go on, on a treadmill and run, no? And it's the same for us. If we do sport, we have different kind of needs, situations, there's a different kind of angles, pressure points. So the prosthesis have to, make it have to be made in a very special way. And 3D printing and all the new technologies allows, that, uh, allows us to do that and to have also an impact on the on the producement of the prosthesis. Mm. So for us, like I have a very very special prosthesis. This is one I use for cycling. So we made this one ahead of my games in 2016. And as you can see, it's not made for walking. It's just really a cycling leg. There is a cleat underneath. I click in into my paddle and it just goes straight. And all the efforts that I'm putting in are going straight into the pedal and there is no 
lose left or right on watts. So, and also the whole socket is made different than I, when I'm walking. So I have less pressure points. I can cycle for hours in there without having pain. And you have to understand that having a disability, like being amputated, we are disabled because we cannot do something because we're not able to cycle, we're not able to run. But as soon as we have a tool like that, a special prosthesis that gives us back the ability to do it again, we are not disabled. And it's very, very amazing how the new technologies open up the doors that like for years been locked so you were disabled and you were just happy to like live your life as much as you can. But now we are like, we are back to life, you know, there is no, the, the, the door opening again and that's for us really a, a game changer because like you, you are back, you're like your dream is not, not an end so it's opening up again and there's like there's no limitation anymore so that's, that's very, very, very amazing for us. Fantastic, thank you. It, it is a really inspiring story that you have and you know we, we look forward to watching further success hopefully at Tokyo uh, next year. <laughs> well that's the plan so <laughs> there are a few people who can cross the fingers so yeah, uh, we all will. I hope you guys <laughs> Marco, you about the vision that Marie has for EOS moving forward. Perhaps could you tell us a little bit about your role within the technology organization and how important innovation management is in that context? So, within, so do you hear me? Yeah, now it's better. So within the EOS management team, we are four leaders representing the technology part of our business. And the three colleagues of mine are responsible for metals, polymers and software. I myself, I have a cross-functional responsibility for all the innovation projects which start with a systematic idea generation going up to prototypes which are functioning already. And you know, EOS has been uh, the innovation leader for the last three decades in the additive manufacturing market and together with Marie and the whole uh, management team, I'm pushing this innovation management forward so that we keep the innovation leadership for the next 30 years. Uh, in order to do so, we are very closely cooperating with our uh, customers and other partners. So the customers are very important because they are giving us a challenge to create things which are really ambitious and innovative so that we really can jump over all the things we have and see. So this is really, really quite important cooperation. We also are going with, with the time and we are adopted a couple of methods from startups, also from the big innovation champions in the world so that we can really be fast and focused in our innovation processes. And just to give you some examples on topics we are, we are working, let's take, let's take the materials. We are currently working on materials which can create part properties which are going far beyond whatever is uh, possible today. <laughs> which can create a highly isotropic uh, part property within one single part. With respect to the machines, we are focusing on efficiency, on the cost per parts in order to make this technology very cost competitive compared also to other technologies in the market. And last but not least, one key for us is the digital manufacturing, the industry 4.0 topics, where we with uh, the different technologies we offer and develop support the full digital uh, projects and uh, product uh, chain at the customers. Thank you. And um, continue on the topic of innovation. Um, what are we showcasing here at the booth today in terms of both metal and polymer innovations? So first of all, first of, first of all. Hello. Okay, <laughs> yeah. first, first of all, one, one thing is very important for me. So if you look around the booth, you will find a huge number of innovations and very, very passionate colleagues which will explain everything to you. Since we have limited time, I'm focusing on two innovations uh, which we uh, are presenting here. 
one and I stand up so that you can see the direction. So if you look in this direction, you will find the metal uh, innovation, which is shared modules. And shared modules is a, a suite of hardware and software solutions supporting our customers for their automated 24-7 3D printing production. And it really supports the full production chain from the very beginning until the very end of the production. So including pre-processing, post-processing, uh, the whole process which we are uh, currently implemented on our M4 uh, machine. So we have continuous powder supply, we have continuous supervision of, of the uh, process using our monitoring systems. And one key for us is also the EOS Connect software suite, which allows full traceability of all the parameters in the process. So the customer really can see what's happening in the process from the beginning until the end. And this is also doable for various production sites all over the world. Shared modules, as the name says, is a very modular concept. So different customers have different needs. And our experts are there to really tailor the shared module solution individually to the different needs of the customer. That was the polymer, uh, the metal side. If you look behind yourself, there is uh, one uh, polymer innovation I want to uh, mention. And this is what we call fine detail resolution. The name doesn't say too much, but to my point of view, we have a real revolution here because with fine detail revolution, which is an early stage innovati uh, innovation, we have for the first time in the polymer 3D printing using lasers, the capability to produce parts with extremely thin wall thickness. So we are talking about a wall thickness of 0.2 millimeters, which is, I have some parts with, with me, this is very small, uh, you will find some more parts uh, over there at the booth, but 0.2 millimeters, just to give you a stomach feeling, is uh, two pages of paper you might have in your hand. That's really, really not very thick. Uh, the, the other advantage of, of that is uh, we can create extremely good surface properties. So the surface of these parts are really extremely good. To our point of view, this can enable a lot of new applications at customers. So, for example, in electronic industries or in consumer good industry, that can open the door for a lot of new applications. And our colleagues are there to speak with the customers about potential new applications we can realize with this technology. And we are very happy that we have that now because that's really really, really a big step forward in the polymer technology. Thank, thank you, Marco. Thank you. Brian, you've been waiting very, very patiently there. So uh, the CEO of Centavia, uh, earlier this year, you established the purpose-built AM facility in Florida to produce aerospace components. You have EOS machines, you work with the EOS technology. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and how you're applying sure. that technology to um, mass production. Sure. Thank you very much. Well, I think if Denise's theme was customization and Marco's theme was innovation, mine is consistency. Uh, I run a company called Centavia that is an aerospace manufacturer focused exclusively on additive manufacturing. Uh, our facility, which we just opened in May, is room for about 60 printers in total. And we currently have 18 uh, on, on, our, uh, on our floor. Uh, of those 18, there's, there's five uh, OEMs, uh, but including EOS, but EOS is actually 11 of those 18. And I think the, the reason why we have so many uh, EOS machines and the reason why that we've had so much success with them, and I have an example part that I'll speak about in a moment, uh, is really the consistency that we see from the printers and from the process. Uh, right now we have nine parts that are in production for aerospace applications, which may not seem like a lot, but I think that's probably more than just about anybody else has right now. And 100% uh, of those are produced on EOS machines. Here's an example of one. 
So this is a, uh, a breather tube for an auxiliary power unit that uh, is on a, uh, a business and general aviation uh, platform. We have a five-year contract to produce about uh, 600 of these a year. And, you know, we exclusively use the EOS M400-4 for this. And, and the reason is because the consistency between builds is superb and the consistency between machines is also superb. And if you don't have that, it's very difficult. I mean, aer aerospace manufacturing is by far the most difficult end market to, uh, to manufacture for m more than any other industry. Uh, and to have cons you know, differences and variations between builds and differences and variations between machines if you have to change machines is, is impossible if to, uh, to, to be used for aerospace. So we really like EOS. We look forward to uh, uh, growing the relationship and, and, and adding more printers. And I actually uh, like to compliment Marie because one of the things we don't do a good enough job about in, in this industry is speaking about the environmental benefits of this process, both in terms of the end uh, uh, use and actually the industrial ecology of the, the, the process itself compared to traditional methods. And so the fact that I think it was your first statement that you made as CEO was about sustainability. I, I, I haven't seen that from other CEOs and from other uh, uh, OEMs in this industry, and I, I really I compliment you on that because the more we can get the word out and spread the good news about what we're trying to do here, I think the better it is for all of us, both on the raw technology side uh, and on the applied technology side. Well, so thank you for that. <laughs> Brian, a, a true professional there, soldiering on despite the uh, the overhead speakers. I hope you guys could could, have, could hear me. But. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure we could. Well. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I think, first of all, perhaps a round of applause for, for the panel, because especially our two guests, Brian and, and, and Denise, for, for, for great insights. Um, we, we thank you all for coming. There, there is more information on the innovations that Marco mentioned in the press kits. If you have further questions and would like you know, more interview time with, with the team, then again, we need to approach uh, Claudia or Martin. Uh, I don't know, do we have time for uh, a couple of questions? So I think we have time for the mic person. Maybe I can grab this. Do we, do we have any questions from in the crowd? If you uh, put your hands up, we'll, uh, we'll find you with the uh, microphone. Do we have any, uh, do we have any questions? No. Seems everybody has all of the, uh, the the information that we need. Yeah, we've got a little bit of time, so perhaps Denise, if you want to introduce uh, what this one is for. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's you can hear me better here. So what I can introduce it to uh, to you if you have still time is like this is the first three D printed foot at the moment, just for walking. So what is very nice here to me is like if I go into the ocean, into the sea. I can go in there, and if there is sand or anything else, it doesn't bother me anymore. So <laughs> I go out, and then the water is just rinsing out, and the sand also, and it's fine. Why is that a problem at the moment? Because if I go with my normal walking prosthesis inside, it's so technology expected that like water is not good, so I cannot go in. So I need a special leg that's waterproof. And that one, if I have a cosmetic-based foot, you know, all the sand and water sticks in. So <laughs> um, if I go into my hotel room, everything is full of water and sand. And that's so annoying. With that new technology, I don't have that anymore. So I have a special one. And as y you can see as well, I have made a cover um, on top. That's like how I wanted it. So I put it in the blue and black version. And these covers are to me really also something like and fashion attitude piece and you have to see like if you get amputated you're not like you wake up and you say hey happy I'm amputated there is a leg missing and I got a new one 3d printed so it takes a time and it's a process of self-acceptance and uh, to be okay with that and that there is now a prosthetic and not a real leg and I think definitely like you have now covers that you can design the way you want them to be. So give me an example, or I would like to give you an example, like if you are a child and you, your name is Laura and you're eight years old and you love unicorns and pink, yeah, you can print la unicorns and pink and put them on your leg. 
And that helps a lot to really find a way of acceptance that you have now a prosthetic. And also for, for guys, you know, they can put a superhero on and I can put them in every color I want. So if I want to go out at night, it will be a white one with gold elements. And if I'm in the ocean, it's going to be a blue and black one. So whatever I like. And I think that's really good for us because it helps, because we can express ourselves. And it helps on the way how we can accept having a prosthetic. And it, it changes from like hiding and making it look like a leg to hey, look at this, that's mine. And becomes really like a fashion gimmick. And that's a really wonderful change in how we look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. And uh, again, thank you to all of the panel. Thank you to all of you for coming and uh, listening to us. We invite you to experience the innovations at the booth, uh, uh, the, the modular system, the new polymer innovations as well. And um, further questions, we can see Claudia or Martin. So thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you so much. It was brilliant.